So what's up guys, so in the last video as we saw, you we created models and we created mutations and we saw how to make queries but as of now, we are making queries that require user authentication but we had to log in user in the admin panel so that is not basically what you always want to do so that is why in this video, we'll be looking at setting up the session with setting up user authentication so the first thing we need to do first is if you can go to Django settings you always have to set email backend so because in this application obviously we will be sending emails but since we are not configuring for production then we want to use a simple email backend so that is why I'll bring it over here and add the email console email backend so this will allow us to receive many emails over here so the next thing is we want to set up the Django authentication so first thing is we need again to install the Django authentication application as stated over here so install the pip install Django graphing so just let me close the app here so just add that and then let it install as it install let us add the app which we are currently installing into our settings so inside our settings can and add it over here so that is it then we need to set up our schemas which is over here so these are the queries and the mutation and in our case we already have them so we need we don't need to remake them because we will just be extending them so inside our schemas let's add the new one the new schemas and mutation the new queries and mutations i'm really sorry i'm used to that so and then these are the user related mutation queries that have been made for us so we just need to extend our queries with those so this is basically how you can extend queries so whenever you're building several applications then you just have to make a query and then you can import it wherever you want and then just extend it this way so that is it and then this is our mutation for the authentication it will allow us to reset password create user login and wherever wherever so we just need to add it to our mutation but our mutation was named to do which is the relevant name now it's because we are doing authentication and many other to do so we have to change it and also change it over here so basically what our mutation will be doing are these i think you can see what it does the names can just state what it's doing so that is it so the next thing i think we are importing this tab or maybe twice so just do those and we are good then back to our settings file we need to add this graphql json web token authentication thing so somewhere just down where we added our graphene settings we want to keep them together so just come over here where we added the schema let's add it over there then another thing we need to add is in this case i won't be using this authentication backend because i think it's kind of i don't know but maybe we just let's just add it so let us bring it over here but these will somewhat not work so i prefer something that is over here for that i normally like adding this authentication backend so it allows you to continue using the django out backend and also the json web backend and then few other things you might need are this verification expiry to allow user to at least renew token on expiry and also allow a long running refresh token so that the refresh token cannot just expire so soon so if you have those because we are using a refresh as you see we'll be refreshing user token then in the Django backend you need to add this so this one will be keeping record of user tokens 
so inside the, the bug and install apps you need to add these so these will allow you to keep record of user refresh tokens and the time they expire and the time to create they were created so if you have those set then i think our application is ready to start now let's just run python manage the p1 then make migrations no, migrate and graphene out things so and then we have one other thing you see through a warning over here it's because the graphene out changes user user id to be something that is not the default for python so we need to tell python that no it's not a thing to do with you we are not trying to change anything so please just continue using your normal thing so that is it and then now if we run the server python manager to I run server if we run the server we expect that warning to have disappeared because we have specified that we are going to be using the default one so let us just set the, test the application now now let's go to so this is creating a user which i don't think i need let's go to the docs let me first zoom this if we go to mutations you see some other mutations have been for us the registration and you see we see the fields it expects verify account and such and such and such and such so let us test our mutation for, by creating a user so let's create a user let me zoom this back to be smaller hope that is enough so this is a register we are calling the register which expect email username password and password so let's run and see boom 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 so you see it created user and then it returned a refresh token which are just what we specified over here so guys that is it if you see after account was created you received an email over here so this is the email if you want at least to change this url then you need to add that site id to at least one because and then this will prompt you to at least make some migrations i don't know if django sites have been added over here just add sites so after doing that again you will just need to add sites so so you see when you run the server it tells you that there are two migrations because at least we want uh, always whenever we are sending email it's forwarding to our front end application which we know is running in port 3000 in this case then just make so okay and then just run server manage it here and then run server so if you run the server we did not migrate i'm really sorry guys okay and then run server and visit the admin panel okay password don't update so inside here you see sites and the default is example.com now if we try we cannot just create the user let's present the email which we receive something over here to resend email it's called resend password resend, resend resend activation email so we are calling resend activation email over here then we just pass in the email we gave which is resend then the email is just our email so at least and then let's get success back and if error the cast let's get the errors so you see email success recent is true so if you go over here you will see that email activation is sent is set to this now that is because in the sites it's because it's saying that but we want at least to be local host and then three one two three so and then you just call it to do application 
So this is basically the name that the user expect. You just don't have to name it with anything because again, that name is useful because I think it's normally included in the email. As you can see, it's obviously almost included here. So name it something that your application is doing or the name of your company. So that is it for this video, guys. In the next video, we will see how we can just start using these things in our front-end application. So please don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you love.